Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Before we dive in, I'd love to give a shout out to our sponsor, Joan Diago. Joan is the CEO of Dare to Shine. Joan helps coaches, healers and spiritual guides create or expand their dream healing business. And you can check Joan out at joandiago.com. We'll pop her link in the show notes below. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I am so excited to have our guest with us today. We're going to be talking about lots of incredible things. Let me introduce Alex to you. Alex Iglesia helps you move forward with what matters most when something deep is calling you to name the game you're born to play. Oh, so good. Alex walks you through clarifying frameworks and profound experiences that open up the energy, confidence and personal shifts you need to trust your gifts strengthen your story and share your medicine. A former ninja yogi, a husband, author and avid movement man, Alex has served visionary speakers, modality pioneers, serial entrepreneurs and many wickedly smart, beautiful and bold leaders create their next part of their epic journey. Wow. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, Louisa. Hi, everybody. So excited to have this conversation with you. So Alex, let's kind of take it back to, I guess it's the beginning of this part of the journey. You know, how did you start your business? What made you start your business? Well, the what made me start my business was I, I really couldn't work anywhere. <laughs> so I had, I had, I have had pl- strings of jobs where the the kind of things that I was doing or that what I wanted to, what I wanted to change um, was, was always against what I was being asked to do. It was always, why are we doing it this way? I don't understand it. Or, hey, look at this. Um, I remember being really excited about Fast Company magazine in my uh, early 20s because it's all about change and personal branding and doing things differently. And I would send my management uh, all these articles about how to how to run an organization. So it didn't <laughs> work really well. Um, so that that was a pretty consistent theme, and um, I, just, I really needed to. The other part was I'm kind of unhirable in the sense that. The, the, like you read in the bio, that the way that I think, and I want to do work with story and gifts, and um, and and see things differently and synthesize things differently, uh, doesn't fit in a good job description typically. So mm-hmm. that was why I had to. Um, and then personally, um, the the big shift for me was really recognizing one day that I, I I really wasn't living my own story, and I didn't know why I was promoting uh, at that time self defense. Um, I didn't, I didn't know why. And it, it occurred to me that I was not living my own story. I was only telling, um, my teacher's story. And when people wanted to know who I was and why I was the one who was there, I didn't have an answer. So that, that shifted pretty much everything, um, at that period of my time, my life. That's huge. It's, you know, you've touched on something there. I can, I see this a lot with entrepreneurs hiding behind sharing their story. It takes a lot of vulnerability and courage to actually share your story Um, and that's how we connect with people isn't it through understanding people's stories and their journeys and 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 all the things Um, so this is just music to my ears to to hear what you're what you're sharing here and I know that you've you're you you were really making me giggle when you were talking about how you were telling your management team how to run their companies and and all the things (laughs) I could really see myself back in the back in social services and, and those kind of being in those board meetings where people just things people kind of <laughs> lose their personality in in places they re- they really can 
Um, so I know your background was, uh, is, is it in engin engineering? Is that the, the world that you came from? Well, I started off as an engineer going to engineering school. I thought I wanted to design snowboard materials and also spaceship materials. I thought, you know, it's really cool that you can make this ceramic and put it on a spaceship and then protect people from earth reentry. Uh, fast forward, I never really wanted to be in a lab, uh, but that <laughs> alchemy, that synthesis, that creating something new and new possibilities uh, or new features because we did something different, uh, that that was what really was 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 hiding in plain sight. Oh, I love it. Yeah. When we look back, we can start to see how we've had all these different experiences, how they brought us to, to where we are now. So I'd love to kind of dive into to this. So you, you mentioned that your background is, you know, because engineering is very logical. <laughs> oh, I see it as very logical. So how do you blend that logical world of engineering with what you're doing now with this with the embodiment and spiritual practice practices? Because they seem very separate. Often people would say that I hear that a lot in terms of um, the sort of disparity of those two worlds. Yeah, well, my uh, growing up, my dad was an airplane mechanic and supervisor. So he was in charge of making sure that planes could continue flying and people didn't die. And I was terrible in the garage. I was terrible as a mechanic. I was terrible in as an engineer doing the practical things. Um, so it's really funny that in such a way I'm a mind body mechanic now mm -hmm. because in the in the in the garage of sacred space or ceremony or ritual or or facilitation pulling things together redoing things rewiring things repatterning things makes complete sense. So I was trained to be and I was in situations where I needed to be logical and that only worked so well but once I started bringing my body online and making it safe to be myself, mm -hmm. then my intuition kicked in in tremendous ways. And when I would teach mo movement classes or yoga classes, I would walk into the room, ask what's going on for people, make jokes like, you know, let's blame your parents. And then we would do this movement practice and people would say, my God, my life is changing, which was actually really, really tough for me because it never fit at that time, the labels we were using. So it wasn't a yoga class. So at a certain point, I was mixing an, uh, an embodied intelligent modality with my own intuition, with yoga asana, along with other mobility while asking questions and tuning in intuitively. I was like, this isn't yoga. No. Yoga is a thing, but it's not yoga. So I started feeling a bigger and bigger gap between the words and the promise and the way we think, like the why we were coming together and then the what that was actually happening. And that was really tough for a while. So talk about, you know, separate, like the logical and intuitive stuff wasn't allowed to be married for a really long time as a, as an offering. Mm. And it took a lot of seeing what it is that I did, seeing the impact of what I did, thinking about it logically, using the words, working with words, and ultimately doing a lot of the appealing work um, that was also creative work to get to the point where I could flow a lot more dynamically with my offers and what people wanted and, and have it have a really generative back and forth. Oh, I love that. I see this a lot where, you know, we, we train in something and then actually by bringing in your own wisdom and intelligence, it turns into something so much more. And that's how we can evolve as a, as a collective with people being able to evolve and develop these getting better and better about how we how we do things I think this is fantastic so so exciting to hear what you've what you've created what does does your method have a name the being epic method or the uh, being epic approach yeah epic approach. and what I work with people typically at the beginning is is mapping their epic oh okay I love it <laughs> I love it so it's recognizing the epic within for 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 everybody what do you think of in terms of, because this is a, a word that I see a lot around on the internet, and I'm sure you do too, and our, our listeners will as well, in terms of being authentic and that aspect of, you know, it's a bit of a buzzword. So, you know, from your perspective, could you kind of explain a little bit about the importance of authenticity in the transformation, whether it's personal, professional, in the transformation that you're helping people uncover and then embrace as their own. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, I guess the th one thing that comes to mind is imagine going to a friend's closet and grabbing their clothes and taking their backpack and going to their fridge. And after a while, it's like, there's a certain, um, maybe there's a certain novelty and adventure to it. But ultimately it's like, if I wanna feel my best and I'm using someone else's stuff, there's, there's gonna be some sort of gap. Mm -hmm. And that's not really reconcilable with what we would typically think of as healing work. Like I am not broken and wrong that I'm feeling that way using my friends or a stranger's stuff. In a similar way, our own biography and our own biology works that way. So um, if I haven't consciously gone on my journey, if I haven't consciously said, this is what I'm up to, I might be pursuing interests because of interests or because of conditioning or because of karma. But at some point, if I don't go, wait a minute, this is I, I don't have unlimited time in, in this particular life. This is, this is what I'm going to do, or at least this is what I'm going to look for or something where it's like, I know that I'm choosing it. And so I find that a lot of people just don't do that consciously until much later. Now, what's interesting is we've got this idea of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. There's actually multiple journeys and there's multiple development. And so hero's journey is done when we can say, I know that I love myself and I know what I love and I'll do for the sake of love. So we come back to the village, having done our quest, having done our exploration, having gotten some sort of a gift. And we say, I'm here because I love. That's the end of the hero's journey, but that's not into leadership yet. Mm. Leadership is when we take a different journey and we say, I know what I love and that needs fixing. That needs me, that needs me. So what happens? is if I haven't recognized, and this is where a lot of, I think, creative adults, entrepreneurs, spiritual folks are like so close to their sweet spot and their authenticity. They don't necessarily need to go on another hero's journey and get another gift. They are the gift. It's more of a journey of recognition. That's what I take them through to complete the hero's journey they've been on. So the cycle of suffering can end and they can go, oh my God, I'm home in my body. Mm. I can be home in the world. I'm constantly evolving and that needs me. I'm valuable. And that's where we can start to get a real sense of grounding in an evolutionary way. I matter, but it's about you. And we can start to play with these paradox, what seems like paradoxes, but is really connection. I love that. You just described it so, so well. I think it's a write it down uh, for everybody. That piece that I know our listeners will resonate with, with this in, in relation to um, knowing that it, of course, it all starts with us first and being able to come back to return to love and to really, truly, truly love ourselves. Often I'll hear from people saying, does it ever end <laughs> this, this, this healing journey? And can I go out and do what I'm, I came here to do the impact that I want to make whilst I'm evolving and, and growing and, 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 and continuing to do, to do that healing, if that makes sense. Does that resonate? Absolutely. And I've really, that's been a big one for me um, because I could spend a lot of time in workshops and healings and adventures. So recognizing that it's not just a loop, that it's not healing that doesn't end. And if we actually can go, wait, I am a wounded healer, meaning I've been opened by life and challenge and wonderfulness. I've been opened and I have a wound. I have an opening. I have a vulnerability. That's actually good that's not a problem to be a wounded healer so to recognize some version of that to recognize your own story or myth and then start to change it from i need more healing that's that's the experience i'm having to i'm dynamically changing and adapting to conditions mm. it's very very different and we can see that in fitness really easily because if i hurt my shoulder i need to go to therapy or do the thing or get mobility to heal but at some point I can move my shoulder enough and it's integrated with the rest of my body enough that I can start to try things and do things. And if I can't do something, it's not for a lack of healing. It's just that I haven't practiced those skills with enough reps yet. So that's a that's been a super helpful distinction for me because it's not always healing, it's often creating. Mm. 
do you know this is this is music to my ears because I do see so many people going down that it's almost like an addiction to healing and going down the rabbit hole of um focusing on that rather than having that balance I, I see it as a balance of healing and being able to focus on as you described those reps <laughs> um yeah. you know whether it's business reps in business fitness reps mindset reps we need the reps to strengthen what we're working towards and and, and building I love that I love that I, I, I think it's really important and I've been thinking about this um in, in a surprising way and I want to acknowledge you with 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 not falling into this trap so what you just said people get caught into um healing or maybe addicted to it I don't think for good 90 some percent it's their fault it's not their addiction mm-hmm. I think in many ways, it's the system that they're in. So for example, if we go to a workshop or we go through a process and the prime context is everything that doesn't allow the thing you want, let's let it go. Sounds really great. But if we get to the end of the day and that's been the context of the questions, oh, okay, you'd like this cash, you'd like this money, you'd like this offering, you'd like this confidence, great. Everything that doesn't allow that, let's let that go, let's delete it, let's heal it. And that's it. Then mm. all, what's actually happened is the system that we were in was always putting our attention on what needs to be let go or healed. Again, not a problem unless it's just lopsided like that. So the other part that's needed is Everything that is good and true and beautiful and wonderful and amazing about doing that, being that, having that, becoming that, will you choose it, allow it, make it happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you do both sides. Mm -hmm. You do both sides. But I have over the years experienced most modalities don't. It's huge. You know, it's one of the things that I experienced that too. And I was like, there's something missing and seeing these two worlds sort of running in tandem (laughs) thinking they need to be brought together. This is like, we need that. We need the balance. We need the balance with, with, with all these beautiful ways of transforming and evolving and becoming, moving on to those, those higher timelines. Mm -hmm. You, you speak a lot around being able to, um, you know, move forward after these, after these wounds. I'd love to, you know, explore this a little bit further with you around, you know, your journey has involved um, breakdowns, rebuilding from the ground up. Could you share a little bit about these, ex- these experiences for you, you know, how they've shaped your understanding of your, your journey to your epic life? Yeah. Well, when I was a personal trainer, so I, I, I stopped doing self-defense, like what the heck is my story? And then a number of things happened and I started being a personal trainer in a high-end gym. And um, I realized that when I would go for my own goals or I would start a program, have a personal trainer, I would take a step forward and then and then two steps back. I would start doing the thing and then something would break down. It'd be my digestion for the amount of food I was trying to eat, or it would be my neck or my shoulder. Like just, it was always a breakdown. Uh, that did not help my confidence at all. Uh, then the thing, same thing happened creative, creatively. I created the epic workout, trying to combine a hero's journey with functional movement. And people said it was amazing. I thought it was a failure because I had this big vision. I, there was what I thought it was. And then there was what was actually happening. And there was a gap. I didn't know how to deal with that gap back then. This continued in multiple ways. I, I, my, my, my neck broke down one night randomly during a dream. Oh. Uh, the night before a, a, Spart- a, a 13 mile Spartan race. And I got on these ro- rollers to work on my shoulder because my intuition was go here. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that I could feel a sense of uh, this this little part of like, yay, I won't have to do the race. Like, wait, no, I want to do the race. Had a little conversation and in the morning my neck was fine, which was really unusual. So that was the beginning of really taking ownership of my own psychosomatic mm. creating of my problems without overly blaming myself. So fast forward, had a lot of experiences of that, of something breaking down and then finding a very deep root cause to it, dealing with that, and then quickly healing. 
um, or get at least getting back to the point where I could I could do the thing creatively with business and um, and in my body. Um, it was really, really challenging. It was very challenging. And along the way, what I kept seeing was the the information that was on my epic map mm -hmm. was where these experiences kept bringing me back to. And I go, oh my God, that's already on my map. Or I go ask for help and get and pay a lot of money and get some support and coaching. And where we'd go to was already on my map. It's like, well, if it's already on my map and I keep forgetting it, what should I do about that? Mm -hmm. And that's where I started really actively, proactively digging into um, the things that were on my epic map so that I could sort of preempt breakdowns mm -hmm. and chase breakthroughs in a, in a really grounded, um, creative, let's go for it. And oh, do I need it kind of a way? <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. There's, you, you're, you really demonstrated that self-awareness of being able to really listen to, it's that little, little voice that kind of whispers, not the, not the soul voice, but the subconscious voice that can whisper with that, you don't, oh, thank goodness, you don't have to do that yet. And you're like, what? You know, those moments when we can catch it are so, so powerful. And so often people aren't aware or they'll, they'll think that that's the soul's voice. If it's like a bigger, bigger, you know, um, perhaps a life changing decision in terms of business, they'll potentially be not listening to the to the right voice. They're listening to the the fear voice, the programmed voice, rather than the the voice of the the voice of the soul and that intuition that you you, you spoke of. Oh, there's so much here. I, I feel like you know we need like a day's podcast <laughs> to chat to chat with you, Alex. Just to kind of wrap it up, what are the three top tips tips that you'd like to to share with entrepreneurs, you know, in business to help them on their on their journey? Hmm. I think one of the biggest ones is go bigger. And I don't mean that in the judgy go big, play a big way. Um, I think oftentimes if one person is telling another person you need to play a bigger game or something like that, it it's it's not really an invitation, it's not really checking in with someone. Mm -hmm. but if we can to, for ourselves go okay you know I'm, I'm aiming for this I'm trying to do this this is what I want to accomplish this week whatever clarity we have if we can go bigger for a little bit get a broader perspective maybe even use your body to go a little bigger but the idea is what do I think is the best outcome of this what could I imagine is the best and to see the ripple effect so for example um, if I want to buy uh, this glass want to buy some glasses for a friend Mm -hmm. I could pause and consider if I buy the set of glasses, then the people who made the glasses and the people who invented glasses, like there's a whole lineage of who that is connected to and the contribution it would be to buy the thing. That's mm -hmm. a broader perspective. If I do the same thing with my offerings, that can go bigger. Then I can start to feel into and imagine practical pieces that align with that but also any strange stuff, weird voices that go away from that. Because if I go big and I feel more commitment, that'll bring up more stuff. And then tip two would be spend a little bit of time in that fear side. Because if we spend a little bit of time with it, not only A, will we probably burn off some of it or get clear on something to heal or create, but just a few breaths behind that fear is some sort of power, purpose, clarity, wisdom, something. Mm. And if all it does is open us to more breadcrumbs from the universe later, then that minute or two would have been worth it. And if it gets us all the way to way more commitment, then that even better. And one more tip. Um, I've got this rock that teacher That's beautiful. Mine made me. Um, I have found that so naming things is, is, is extremely important. I think there's a reason that a lot of fantasy stories, fiction stories, somehow use the power of name or true name to evoke, like, I'm here and I know what I'm doing. And I found that when playing with purpose or what am I doing or, or, or expanding or up-leveling, anything along those lines, if you actually work with your own name or the name of your thing, um, it will lead you. So what am I doing today? I'm Alexine. If nothing else, I'm Alexine and you're Louisine 
<laughs> and there's something really sweet and divine child and successful mm -hmm. entrepreneur all wrapped up into that. So let that be a context for what you're up to and uh, let life lead the way a little bit. I love that so much. I'm Louisa Ring. <laughs> I'm Alex saying that is brilliant absolutely brilliant because you can really feel the embodiment of that of who you're being and how you're showing up in the world there's so much there Alex with what you've said around being able to look um take a bigger view as to that bigger context of how you're operating and, and showing up with within the world that just creates that expansion for us to operate with often we can go go too narrow and be just focusing on the next step um, which just creates that can that contraction i know people are going to want to be in touch with you and stay connected how can people find you what tell us all the things and we'll pop pop all the things in the show notes as well well alex iglesia is my website i've got a lot of free resources online at youtube some longer pieces and shorter pieces so uh, i love creating experiential well pra practical experiences to so that at the end of the thing things are different mm. uh, so there's a lot there and then uh, I've got, you know, this epic map work is, is so important. I found that I created a really short video to take someone through it in such a way that they go, okay, I can just use this being epic approach at any level of my life. And it takes people through the process of making a map and essentially how it works so they can do it on repeat. Uh, and that's my gift for everybody in the audience. Oh, that's so generous. Thank you so, so much. Oh. Well, it's been a complete joy chatting with you, Alex, and I know our listeners are all going to come and find you. And I encourage everybody to download that that incredible map, your epic process gift. And we'll pop the, the link for that in the in the show notes as well. All right. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us. Thanks, Louisa. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more conversations to inspire you. Till then, lots and lots of love. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.